Hi, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Calculus. My notes start off with uh, a table of contents and uh, a notation guide, which can be very helpful. We're going to start now with chapter zero, which deals with preliminary topics. Now, chapter zero sounds easy. Uh-uh. It's the hardest chapter of the whole class for almost all the students because it's a mass review and then we throw you up to the higher levels. <laughs> We're going to start off today with the first five sections. All right. In 0 0.1, we're going to review sets of numbers. So what's a set? A set is a collection of objects called the members or elements of the set. In a Venn diagram, we often draw a set using some sort of circle or oval, and we can denote the elements of the set or represent the elements by little dots here. So for example, uh, in the set of integers, which we'll talk about later on, uh, maybe this dot represents one, this represents two, this represents three, and so forth. And these are elements or members of the set Z, the set of integers. This is also a set. This here denotes the empty set or null set which is the set consisting of no members. Sometimes when you solve an equation, there are no real solutions, and the solution set is the empty set, or null set. Later on, I'll talk about the idea of subsets, but let's get right to it. Let's talk about these sets of numbers. One, two, three, four, and so forth. They're elements of Z, but they're also elements of Z plus, more precisely. By the way, we write Z either boldface or with a, with a double bar that's referred to as blackboard bold. All right. uh, Z plus is the set of positive integers, and it consists of, so the set Z plus, I'll grab this over here, <laughs> here's Z, if I can do it over here. <laughs> So Z plus, Z plus consists of the following set. One, two, three, and so on. That's the set of positive integers. Uh, Z, by the way, comes from the German word Zollen, which means entire. Uh, for example, uh, if you buy eggs at a grocery store, uh, you normally buy a dozen, but you could buy one whole egg, two whole eggs, and so forth. Sometimes we refer to counting whole or natural numbers, but there's a lot of confusion as to which sets contain zero and which ones don't. So I don't like to use those, uh, those uh, terms too much. All right, well, after the positive integers, what other numbers do you learn about? You learn about the negative integers, z minus. Okay, so z minus would consist of negative one, negative two, negative three, and so forth. And then together with this super magic number of zero, uh, and books have been written about zero, they don't cost zero, but books have been written about zero. Put them all together and you get z, the set of integers which consists of the positive integers, one, two, three, and so forth, the negative integers, negative one, negative two, negative three, and so forth, and also zero. Now let's say that we want to go beyond the set of integers. Let's we start making fractions. Then we can think about this new set, Q the set of rational numbers, ratios of integers. This is the set of all numbers that can be written in the form integer over an integer that's not zero. Remember, it's always illegal to divide by zero. So for example, uh, 
fractions such as one half, one third, this ugly thing, negative 823 over 9,900. And even seven, because seven can be written as the fraction seven over one. Every integer is a rational number. And by the way, one comment about that. Because every integer is a rational number, we can say that Z is a subset of Q. Uh, so that goes back to what I had up here, all right? Uh, let A and B be sets. A is a subset of B, and that's denoted by this over here, when every member of A is also a member of B. So for example, if this oval represents A in our Venn diagram, and this oval represents B in our Venn diagram, then A is a subset of B. Every element of A is also an element of B. We assume that B includes everything inside the big oval here. Every integer is a rational number because every integer can be written as itself over one. Z is a subset of Q. Every integer is also a rational number. Q, by the way, comes from quotient, right? Uh, if you divide an integer by a non-zero integer, you're taking a quotient of integers, you get a rational number. We often think of these as fractions of integers, positive or negative or zero. We can also think of them in decimal form. So we can think of the rational numbers as a set of numbers that can be written as finite or terminating decimals, such as one half, which is equal to 0.5 or 0 0.5. Uh, the zero here is optional. Now this is a terminating or finite decimal that indicates that one half is a rational number. 0.5 is a rational number because it can be written like this, one over two. Seven is also terminating. But a rational number could also be a repeating decimal. For example, one third can be written as well, at one, well, one third is exactly 0 0.3 bar. This is a repeating bar here. And this number is, in decimal form, 0 0.33333333 and so on forever and ever. So a decimal number that can be written in this repeating fashion is also a rational number. This decimal number can be written as one over three. It's a rational number. So the rational numbers include numbers like these numbers that can be written as nice fractions or whose decimal representations either terminate or go on forever in a repeating fashion like this or this, for example. So beyond the rational numbers, let's say that we have a number that can be written in decimal form, but it doesn't terminate, or you couldn't use a repeating bar. Then we get to the world of R. R is a set of real numbers. Basically, if you take any number that can be written as a decimal uh, uh, with a, a decimal point, a finite number of digits to the left, and any number of digits to the right, okay, uh, you get a real number. Examples include these guys. Pi, which is about 3.14. Uh, it's 3.14159, and so on and so forth. Uh, sometimes people Memorize digits of pi if you have no life. There was a fellow in 60 Minutes who thought of the digits of pi in terms of colors. But there is no repeating pattern, and it does not terminate as a decimal. The square root of 2 has the same feature. Uh, this number has the property that when you multiply it by itself, you get 2. It's 1.414, ya, ya, ya. It does not terminate or repeat. Now we can indicate the set of real numbers using a real number line. Any real number will correspond to some point on this real number line. All right. Beyond the set of real numbers, we have these. C, the set of complex numbers. Actually, every real number is a complex number. Hey, zero is a complex number. So you've been studying complex numbers all your life. Uh, 
But the ones that go beyond the real numbers are the imaginary numbers, things like i and 2 plus 3i. We're going to see these old friends of ours starting in chapter 2. For right now, in chapter 0 and chapter 1, we're going to keep it real.